doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. And he still doesn't have a catch. We're into the second half. I think it's a little bit of a surprise to me, but that was one he should have caught. Absolutely. That was his best opportunity right there. He dropped it. It looks like, yes, it is six defensive backs on the field for Carolina. They're going with a dime set. They run Smallwood. And he's got a first down as he's up to the 48. A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. The more football I watch, the more I want to check and see if teams are going to panic when they're down on the scoreboard. And this team has shown no signs of doing that. A lot of the time, they come out after the half. Things haven't worked so well in the first go around. They want to throw the football like crazy. But the way to open up throwing the ball is to run it. And they've run it well here to start the second half. A gain of six there on first. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. Now Taylor to throw on second down. Complete left side to tight end Rodgers. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. And Richard Rodgers makes the grab, and let's face it, it's going to follow him the rest of his career. The Hail Mary he caught to beat the Lions in 2015 in Detroit, pretty memorable play. Those Lions fans, they just don't like you right now if they heard that. I didn't mean to bring it up to, you know, pull the Band-Aid off the wound there. I was just trying to praise Richard Rodgers. <laughs> yeah, they're going to be mad at me. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. The defense won that play so fast that I think if the running back even had time to notice if anyone was there, it was just a blink of an eye, and there was a loss on the play. Push his way forward here for a good little gain. Five yards on the carry there, and it leaves him with third and about six yards to go. They got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. Here we go. On third down, Taylor escaping the pressure right, and Rodgers has it over on the right side. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. Give him six on the play, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. Let's just make this one simple. Could he be any more open than he was on that play? Yeah, they lost him going to the outside. Hard to believe because you go through your accounting on each and every defensive snap. Who's got who, what, what defense you're in. That was totally a blown coverage. Running for it, Smallwood. And he will have the first down before he's tackled at the 12. Well, the hallmarks of their success this year, they've been fearless on fourth down. And they convert another one right here to move the chains. Offense comes to the line now, first and 10. They come out here in the eye. Going right back to Smallwood. And they'll lose yardage here. They go backwards to the 13-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. And a really long drive here, and it goes on and on. Let's go! And off comes to Smallwood. And this play goes nowhere, losing yardage back to the 15. He lost two there, and it's third down. Luke Keekley combines speed, intelligence, toughness, puts it all together. It makes plays like one we just saw there. He may not be a big-time blitzer, but, boy, he knows how to pursue straight ahead and make plays in the run game. Taylor being chased out left. He can't, and this is caught. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Jordan Matthews 
his sixth touchdown of the season. And the Eagles are within an extra point of tying this thing up. And he'll put it through, and that evens us up at 10 apiece. So all square here in this third quarter as the kick's away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. The Panthers offense now, they head back on the field for their first possession of the second half. Now they try the right side here. And he is going to lose yardage here. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. And frankly, Brandon, we're talking about things I'm not sure we ever thought we'd talk about in the NFL. And a lot of that is the speed at the linebacker position. A lot of these guys in college, they were safeties. They moved them up to outside linebacker to combat the spread offenses. And now we're seeing it in the NFL. Those same guys using their speed to make plays in the backfield, similar to that one. Caught left side by Funches. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. And again this time to the tailback. And three yards there takes him to the 45. Zach Kerr, the big defensive tackle, the one to get him down. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down, you're set up very well for the rest of the drive. They come out here in the eye. On second down, they'll try and run the counter. And no room that time, getting it to about the 46. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. Tough day, tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. So third and five, third and medium here. And on the ground they go with a running back. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. It was stopped on that play. We've had plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then the defense is going to win one, but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to him the rest of the game. one hits at the one continues on into the end zone for a touchback the Eagles coming out as they get ready and they were able to punch it in the end zone last time they'll be looking to do that again here for the defense obviously they'll be looking to stop them from punching it back in the end zone it always is punch counter punch isn't it and which team has the advantage well let's just go back last time on offense they rolled downfield get to a good rhythm you can see a little more bounce in and out of the huddle. You can see the sideline really get into the game. So defensively, you're thinking to yourself, how do we take that away from them? How do we get the advantage back? Let's see what they come up with. I think pressure is always the first way to go. <laughs> you love pressure. We'll I see, love it. We'll see if they dial it up this drive. See if they stay on the ground for second down. They'll come out in the pistol. They pitch out to Smallwood. It'll be a gain of five, but still about three yards shy of the first down marker, and now it's third down. But if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. So second down was a run play. Now let's see what they do on third. Third down, it's Wendell Smallwood. Not much room here as he only gets it to about the 30. Just a two-yard pickup, and that should necessitate a call for the punt team here on fourth down. And no return. 
return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. Carolina getting set to take the field. And not great starting field position here for the offense. They come out here in the eye. So a defensive brain lapse there and an encroachment penalty. Sometimes when you don't watch the football and make sure that it's snapped, you're watching the offensive player, and they can influence you occasionally and look like they're getting ready to move, and the officials don't detect it. They'll try and run with their fullback. And nowhere to run on the interior of that defensive line. He'll get back only to the line of scrimmage. From his goal line here, Newton. Caught on the left side by Benjamin. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. Now a handoff looking right. And he loses the football the second time. And they take over already five yards deep into the red zone at the 15-yard line. Here comes Eagle offense now as they get set to take over here. And they'll start this drive with very good field position. They give the small wood. And he'll get about three just outside the 10, stopped at the 11. Tackle made by Thomas Davis. We always like to talk about defense in terms of levels. First level defensive line, second level linebackers, third level defensive backs. On that run, that was what we call a first level run, and it was stopped by a second level player. Short pick up there down to about the nine. Two yards the gain there, and now they're left with a third and about four for a first. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. That's going to be caught at the 10 yard line. It'll be a pickup of just two, and it'll be fourth down. So here now, big spot for the kicker. It's Caleb Sturgis. This to break our fourth quarter tie. And Sturgis able to knock it through, and they will take the lead at 13-10. to 10. So the drive here ends with a field goal, and that does give them the lead, but this one is still a long ways from over. And you love to be able to look up at the scoreboard and see that you're out in front, but then you take one look across the field and see that offense is raring to come back out, and you think, I don't know, the field goals are going to be enough to get us home. Then he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Carolina getting set to take the field, and last time they coughed it up led to a field goal. They're fortunate that it only led to a field goal, but still, they're not happy about it. Could you sense the relief, though, when oh. they only gave up the field goal? <laughs> and they were able to trot back out on the field and start this drive. A little more pep in their step because it didn't cost their team a touch. And that's caught inside the 35. A big play there for Carolina. 42 yards. Today's receivers in the NFL, they're the complete package nowadays. We know they can run, we know they can catch, but they have those big frames now. So oftentimes, they just out physical guys downfield and go up and catch the football, and we saw a big gain as a result on that play. On first down, it's Newton. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Brandon Graham in there to drop him and his great season continues. 13 sacks for him now on the year. Here's Newton now on second down. And caught left side, Olsen. And he'll be out of bounds, able to take this one down to the 20-yard line. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, 
you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going